Okay, so previously we talked about um, polynomial functions, how to put them in standard form. We looked at degree, leading coefficient, and we talked about end behavior. We're going to continue talking about characteristics of polynomial functions today with the goal of being able to sketch a reasonable graph. These are not going to be very precise, but just enough that it'll give us an idea of the shape of the graph of this polynomial function. So remember from our work with quadratics that the x-intercepts of any function can be found wherever f of x is equal to zero. And we will use the zero product property once the polynomial is in factored form to help us find that. These are the zeros of the function. They're also the x-intercepts and sometimes they're also referred to as the roots. So example 11 says find the zeros of the given function. Well, the first thing I need to do if I wanna find the zeros is set my equation equal to zero instead of f of x. And then the zero product property says this, and you don't have to write all this out when you're doing your work on your homework. I would include it in your notes because a lot of times people forget and they say, why are my answers the opposite? Because you're forgetting this step. So the next step then is to take each of the factors and set it equal to zero. And those are the equations that we will solve to find our solutions, which represent the zeros. So we get x equals 4, x equals 1, and if I add 1 and divide by 2, I get x equals 1 half. Okay, so those are my zeros. Now on number 12, same thing, I'm going to set each of the factors equal to 0. Now, the GCF, or essentially the term that's out in front this time, this negative 2x, that's different than the first one. The first one, we just had a 3. That didn't have an x on it, so we didn't have to do anything with it. But this one, the negative 2x, does give us a solution. So we have negative 2x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. And then the fact that this one is squared doesn't matter, because as long as it's 0, 0 squared is still 0. So all I need is for x plus 2 to equal 0. We can ignore the squared for now. So our solutions here are going to be x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 2. Now that squared didn't affect our answer, but it does affect the graph. And that brings us to the idea of multiplicity. So the multiplicity of zeros has to do with the exponents of the factors. So in the last example we looked at, the last factor was squared. This tells us that the factor x plus 2 occurs twice, x plus 2 times x plus 2, that makes x plus 2 squared. Since both of those have the solution negative 2, we only write it once, but the power of that factor tells us about the behavior of the graph. The multiplicity of a zero is determined by the degree of the factor associated with that zero. So in example 12, the multiplicity of x equals negative 2 is 2 because, again, it came from the factor x plus 2 squared. So the zero, if this is equal to zero, the zero is x equals negative 2, but the multiplicity is 2 because that is the power that it came from, okay? And so what that tells us, the multiplicity of each zero tells us whether the graph bounces off of the x-axis at that x-intercept. So that would be what happens right here. An even root is just gonna touch the x-axis and turn around. Remember, root and zero and x-intercept all mean the same thing. So it'll touch the x-axis, but it doesn't actually cross through. It just turns around and goes right back. An odd multiplicity will be like at this x-intercept where the graph crosses right through and comes out on the other side, okay? Now, an extra thing to remember is that the higher the multiplicity, the flatter the graph. So, <coughs> excuse me, here's what I mean by that. If I just had x plus one as a factor, that would mean at negative 1, the graph is just going to cross through somehow. If I have x plus 1 to the third, whoops, x plus 1 to the third, 
I got interrupted, so I don't know what I was saying. But if I have x plus one to the third power, that's a multiplicity of three. So this one at negative one is also gonna cross, but the graph will flatten out. So it kind of squiggles through instead of just crossing normally. And if it was a fifth power, it would get even flatter at that zero. So that's what's gonna happen as the degree gets higher. Okay, so for each of these, we wanna find the zeros and give their multiplicity and then describe the behavior of the function at that zero. So I always like to kind of set this up in kind of a table format. So I'm gonna set this equal to zero. We can be a little bit lazy here. So I need to find my zeros. I need to tell what their multiplicities are. And I wanna describe what is the behavior of the graph. Okay, so if x squared is equal to zero, we get x equals zero. Since that is squared, it has a multiplicity of two, and since two is even, the graph is going to bounce at x equals zero, okay? If two x minus one is equal to zero, again, you can do that in your head, but we're doing this, so you're gonna add one and divide by two, so we get x equals one half. This factor has an exponent of one, so that's a multiplicity of one, which means it's gonna cross because one is odd. And similarly, x equals negative five, that comes from a factor with a degree of one, so it is also going to cross, okay? Pause your video and see if you can do the same thing for number 14. I will come back with the answers in two seconds. Okay, so two doesn't have an x on it, so we don't get any solutions there but these two factors both have x's, so we get positive one and negative four for our zeros. X minus one is squared, so the multiplicity is two, and since two is even, the graph is gonna bounce. And then at negative four, the multiplicity is three, which means since that's odd, it's gonna cross, but since it's higher, it's gonna cross a little flatter. That's not super important, but it is good information to have. So that's what the multiplicities tell us about the graph. Lastly, and this is kind of a final check when you do your sketch so you can see if you're on the right track, the turning points of a polynomial function um, is how many times the graph turns around. And what that really is, is it's the relative minimums and the relative maximums of the graph. So if I have a polynomial that does something like this, I have one turning point, two turning point, three turning point, four turning point. This would be a relative max, this would be a relative min, this would be a relative max, and this would be a relative min. Relative just means in this location, it's the lowest. For what's nearby, it's the lowest or the highest. Okay, um, so the rule is this, and there's not really anything to calculate or anything, this is just a rule to remember. A polynomial of degree n will have at most n minus one turning points. So if a polynomial is degree five, it will have at most four turning points, one less than the degree. That phrase at most is really important because that means it can have that many or fewer. It does not have to have four. An x to the fifth graph can look like this and it never turns around, but it can turn around up to four times, which would be like the one we just saw here, okay? So if I have the function given there f of x, that has a degree four, got interrupted again, but anyways, if it is degree four, the maximum number of turning points will be three or less than three. Okay, so that's kind of the last little piece of the puzzle that we need. So here's what we know. We have what we know about end behavior, zeros in multiplicity, and the turning points. This gives us enough information to create a reasonable sketch. Now, this is not gonna be an accurate, perfect graph, but enough of a picture is gonna be useful to know what the shape and whatnot is gonna be, okay? So for each of these, we don't really care about the y values, we're just trying to get an estimate. So we wanna figure out end behavior, zeros, multiplicity, and figure out the turning points so that we know what the graph should look like, okay? I'm actually going to start with the zeros, and I'll show you why. Because when it's in factored form, it might be a little bit confusing of how to figure out the degree. 
because we don't see like x to the fifth multiplied out. And I don't want to multiply it out, so I'll show you how to do it a little bit quicker. Let's start with zeros and multiplicities, okay? So we have zeros, multiplicity, and behavior. So if 3x is 0, x is 0. If x plus 3 is 0, x equals negative 3. And if x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2. Each of these is to the first degree. So all the multiplicities are 1, which are all odd. So that means that all of these are going to cross. Now here's the trick. To figure out the degree, take all of the multiplicities and add them up. So three is the degree, okay? If I were to multiply that whole thing out, the highest power of x I would end up with would be x to the first. So um, adding up the multiplicity is a good way to figure out your degree. And then we look here to tell if the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Here the leading coefficient is positive. Now you can refer back to your notes yesterday. Since I have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, that means that our end behavior is going to be down up. An odd degree behaves like a line with a positive slope. So it's going to go this way, down on the left, up on the right. Okay. And then turning points, the max number of turning points, not toilet paper, turning points, is going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2. That we may not need to, but we just want to kind of keep that in mind. So we come over here, and I'm just going to arbitrarily label my x's. So obviously 0 is at the origin. I'm going to put negative 3 over here, and then negative 2 should be a little closer to 0 than negative 3. Something like that. So it should cross at all of those. I also know that I need to start with my arrow going down, and I need to end with my arrow going up. Okay? and I need to cross through all three of those zeros. So I'll start here and I'll cross. Now I have to turn back around to get to zero, cross, and then I have to turn back around to get to two, and then I'll cross there. I don't need that arrow. Now again, I don't know, it could come way up here like this for all I know. This is just a sketch. So it gives us an idea of the shape and what the graph should look like. And the most number of times this graph can turn around, and I can see that I have one, two turning points, so I am within my maximum number of turning points. And that's it. That's all we're trying to do here. So let's look at number 16. Go ahead and see if you can gather all of the information. Pause your video for a second. Find your zeros, multiplicities, and behavior, end behavior, and turning points, and then come on back to me. All right. Here's what we should have. Now notice with x equals five, since the multiplicity is three, three is odd, but it's a bigger multiplicity, so it's gonna cross, but it's gonna flatten out a little bit at that point. So that's good to keep in mind. So let's mark what we have. We have zero, uh, negative three, and positive five, which is gonna be further over. So we need to, both of our arrows need to be down, down. And again, I see a negative leading coefficient because it's negative right here in front of the x squared. You're always going to look right in the front. So both of my arrows need to end down. So I'm going to start down here, and I cross at 3. Now I have to turn around towards 0, and at 0, I have to bounce. Now it needs to bounce like a parabola. It can't bounce like this. That's not a polynomial. Polynomials can't have sharp corners. So it needs to be round like the bottom of a parabola there. And then I need to turn around, and as I come through 5, I'm going to flatten and then come through. So it's almost like it kind of squiggles through the x-axis there. That's an idea of what our graph looks like. Now, the last one for number 17, we're not going to do the whole thing here. Um, I'll put the answer at the end of the video. But the main difference with number 17 is it's not factored. So we're going to have to do some factoring. Now, there's a rule that we didn't talk about a whole lot when we did quadratics, but that is important to keep in mind here, so I would write this down on your paper. If the leading coefficient is negative, your GCF must be negative, okay? 
We don't ever want negative x's inside our factors. Our factors should always start with a positive. And this way, the leading coefficient, we can tell the sign just by looking at the front of all of our factors, as long as we factor that negative out. So here, I'm going to start by setting this equal to 0. And I can divide all of these by negative 2. And my choices of exponents are 4, 3, 2. So we choose the smallest, so I'm going to divide out x squared. Now we divide everything by negative 2x squared. Pay attention to your signs. So we're going to get positive x squared, positive 9x, and positive 14. Now we look in here. Can we factor this more? And we can. This is an a equals 1 shortcut. We have 14 and 9, which gives us 2 and 7 for our factors. And since it is a shortcut, we can go straight to the factors. Make sure you bring everything else down. So we get x plus 2, x plus 7. And now we can finish this the rest of the way. So I'm going to ask you to pause and try this one on your own. And you can come back in two seconds to get the rest of the answers. And here's what you should have. And here's kind of what your graph should look like. So hopefully you can come up with a sketch now on your own.